lock the doors, turn out the lights, and climb into bed. It's time for Hillbilly Dead Time Stories. Living in Kentucky, I've been blessed to have heard so many great local stories involving the paranormal, UFOs, cryptids, or at the very least stories that were basically unexplainable. Some are very well known such as the horrific suffering that went on in Waverly Hills Sanatorium while it was a fully functional tuberculosis hospital. The tales of haunting since its closing are known worldwide. Of course the same can be said of Bobby Mackey's music world dubbed the world's most haunted nightclub. There are other stories that are well-renowned, such as the Poplick Monster, a half-man, half-goat creature that lures you to an active train track, sometimes resulting in death. The Goat Man will be the subject of its own episode very soon. Kentucky, like most other states, has hundreds of lesser-known legends, one of which is the legend of Gilbert Spencer. Even though the Civil War was 150 years ago, there are still old-timers in Kentucky who have stories to tell from that time. Most of these have been passed on through parents and grandparents. The story of Gilbert Spencer is one of the most popular in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. During the Civil War, many men from the area left to fight, some for the North, some for the South. Many boys that were 17 years of age were also called upon to fight. That was the case with Carolyn Spencer's family. She had a husband and three sons. In 1862, her husband Jim left to join the Confederate forces. Her two older sons, William and Elias, soon joined him to fight for the South. This left Carolyn alone with her 13-year-old son Gilbert to work the farm in what is now Sandy Ridge. It was a difficult task, but through their hard work, they managed to keep the farm going during their absence. Things would take a horrific turn in the summer of 1864. During the Civil War, it was not uncommon for troops from the North and the South to raid homes and farms and steal whatever they wanted from these places. This was usually because the robbers knew that in most cases that there would be no men there to protect the property since they were off at war. On a hot July day, four soldiers rode onto the Spencer's farm. Carolyn and Spencer rushed to the front door to meet the soldiers. They were in Confederate uniforms, so Carolyn assumed that they were delivering information about the war or about her husband and sons. As Carolyn and her son stood in the doorway, the lead soldier halted his horse and asked her to fetch her husband or an older boy. Carolyn informed them that they were off fighting for the South. This news brought an evil grin to all four of the men's faces. One of the soldiers, a heavyset man with a thick beard, pointed his rifle at Carolyn and Spencer. He informed Carolyn that if she interfered with what his men were about to do, that he would shoot her son. The soldiers dismounted and proceeded to enter the home, destroy furniture, rip up clothing, and steal anything of value, stuffing their pockets full before emerging the farmhouse. Carolyn could only stand and watch as the bearded soldier held the rifle flush to Gilbert's head. As the men stumbled out reeking of alcohol, as if they hadn't done enough, one of them calmly walked over to the barn and set it on fire. Carolyn and Spencer could only watch in horror and disbelief. Carolyn, in shock, was at least thankful that her nor her son had been harmed. Unfortunately, the carnage was not over. The bearded man with the rifle jumped off his horse. He walked to Carolyn and said, 
Me and my buddies have a disagreement. They think that I can't shoot worth a lick, but I know I'm a good shot. The other man started to loudly laugh. He then said, Miss, your son looks like he could outrun a rabbit. I want him to take off running across the field towards that fence over yonder. I'm going to count to 50 and shoot to kill. If he can make it over that fence before I get to 50, or if I miss him with my first shot, I'll let him live. If he doesn't run, I'm going to shoot both of you. The other men laughed so loud that they could barely stay in their saddles. Carolyn bent over to take a small wooden cross out of her dress pocket, and she handed it to Gilbert, who was trembling. She whispered that she would not let him run. But Gilbert then suddenly turned toward the four men and said, I'll see you in hell, and he took off running as fast as he could. The bearded soldier carefully aimed his rifle and started counting as the others laughed feverishly. 26? 27? 28? Gilbert was getting close to the fence. 45? 46? 47? He reached the fence and his mother screamed, Jump! Gilbert jumped high above the wooden fence. 50! The shot echoed as Gilbert's head exploded in a mist of blood and skull fragments. The other soldiers laughed and praised the shooter for his remarkable aim as they rode off into the distance. Carolyn sat horrified. In a shattered state of mind, she made it two miles to the neighbor's home. It was well after dark when she arrived in a panic. Old Min Holland and his wife grabbed lanterns and they made their way back to the Spencer's farm. Despite their best efforts, Gilbert's body could not be found. They found bits of skull fragments and a large patch of blood by the fence, but no body. Over the next few months, Carolyn tried her best to recover from the murder, theft, and vandalism. Her husband and other two sons came back from the war, and life began to return as close to normal as possible. One day, a rider approached the Spencer's farm, excitedly yelling to come see what he had found. As Carolyn and the men followed the rider, she thought of Gilbert for some reason. What they saw in the field would haunt them for the rest of their lives. The rider led them to a small clearing. In that clearing were the bodies of the same four men who had killed her son. Each had shattered skulls. The items they had stolen lay next to their bodies. And tied around each of their necks, a small wooden cross. to take on. 